Hi, this is Erika Kasap from Small Robot Studio. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of sculpting a stylized head in Nomad Sculpt. The first step is getting a good reference. Ideally, you want at least a front and a side view. If you need help coming up with a design, I've got a character design video that covers this. On top of my design, I will make a really simple sketch that describes the shape and the proportion of the main masses, similar to the Lumis head abstraction, a sphere that has been sliced from the sides and a box for the yaw. I'll make another sketch on top, describing the planes of the head and the rhythms they make as they connect. My reference is the Asaro head, an anatomically accurate cast made by John Asaro. My character is stylized, but I'm still thinking in real anatomy. The only difference is the proportions I'm working on. If your aim is realism, the process is the same. With my reference ready, I'll save each one as a different image. Now let's hop onto a new scene inside Nomad Sculpt. Get into the background menu under this picture icon. Scroll down to reference image and import from the library your reference images. With the controllers below, you can control their size, location, and how transparent they are in relation to the mesh in your scene. By the way, for this month in Patreon, these reference images with the file of each stage of the process will be available for download as a reward. To access the rewards of the month, join us at patreon.com slash studio. If you are already a supporter, thank you! Let's start modeling! Step 2 is blocking the shapes. I'll get rid of the rounded box the scene gives me by default and bring in a sphere instead. I'll use the project tool to slice my sphere and fit the silhouette of the head. For the side view, we will stretch the shape with the gizmo tool. Now, open the topology menu and in the multi-resolution section, I'll reverse the mesh to have less polygons. With the move tool, I will adjust the silhouette again. I'll now move into a higher resolution level, mask the area that will become the jaw, reverse the mask and pull out with the move tool this volume. I'll carry on refining the shape using the tools move, flatten and smooth. I'll move up and down between the resolution levels. Higher resolutions let me define smaller detail shapes. Lower resolutions are easier to smooth and control bigger volumes. For corners like the jaw, I'll use the tools crease, flatten and occasionally clay or brush to bring volumes up. Since our reference images are orthographic views, we're gonna use the orthographic camera and you'll see me often tap on this icon in the bottom that snaps the view into a perfect front or side view. Every so often I'll change the matcap to help me judge shapes in other lighting. Let's move on to step 3, blocking out the volumes of the features. I'll focus first on the neck and the underside of the jaw. First I will create a low resolution cylinder. Again with the move tool and gizmo I'll make adjustments to the shape. Once that is in place, I'll start to pull the shape for the underside of the jaw. Now it's time to work the ear, which works with another cylinder. Before validating this primitive, I'll make sure to put it on low topology and I'll give different radiuses to the top and the bottom of the cylinder. Now with the primitive validated, I'll snap it into a top view and with the trim tool I'll make a diagonal cut. I'll modify the shape and trim again from the side and so on. The volume of the nose is next. With the cylinder I'll create the bridge and the glabella of the nose. For the main mass of the nose I'll use a sphere again. I'll carry on with the eyes. This time I will use a UV sphere to take advantage of its topology. I'll bring this side slider up to rotate in 90 degrees and bring the poles of the sphere to face front. With the paint tool, I'll block the iris and the pupil. This is not necessary, but I like to work with this reference. Then I'll fit the eye roughly into its location. I'll make a duplicate of this sphere, add some resolution, and with the trim tool, divide it into two volumes and scale them up. These are gonna become the eyelids. Any volume that is double like the eyes, the eyelids of the ear, you can easily mirror in the symmetry menu. I'll take some time to group these volumes and name the objects for better organization. Hey, make sure that you are subscribed with notifications on. 
Otherwise, you might be missing out on the many tutorials that we release for free each week here on YouTube. Having these volumes ready, I'll move on to define with more detail the planes of the head and the rhythms we spoke about before. This is a step 4. I am still using multi-resolution depending on the scale of change that I am working on. The tools I am using are very similar as before. You'll see me use a lot more the brush and the clay tool, because there's extra volumes to build up. As I make adjustments, I might need to refine the size or location of the extra volumes. It makes things way easier to keep them separate for faster adjustments. We don't have a mouth yet, so I'll use the crease tool in reverse mode to block in in between the lips. This stage is simple to describe, but it takes the longest. So when you feel it's ready, take a break and come back with a fresher mind to better judge it. Look at your work zoom out and with different matcaps, and especially changing from the orthographic camera to the perspective one. Let's carry on with step 5. Let's mix all these geometries except for the eyes and the eyelids. I'll select the desired volumes with multi-select and voxel merge with a somewhat low resolution. With the smooth tool, I'll incorporate more naturally the shapes that were previously separated. I'm also gonna get rid of these polygonal looking surfaces, which I could have avoided by adding resolution to them before merging them. Now, with multi-resolution, I'll subdivide my mesh to have more room for detail. I'll refine the nose and the lips. Overall, now that it's all one mesh, I'll make adjustments to respect the silhouette of my reference. Working only in orthographic view might mess up the volumes unexpectedly, so you'll have to go back and work where you already did. When you trust the proportion of your model, you are ready to carry on with the details. I am still focusing on the planes of the head, just the smaller ones. To work on the ear, I'll use masks to isolate areas and work with more control. You probably noticed that the remesh messed up the nice silhouette, so I'll use the project tool to refine it. With the hide mask button, I'll hide the rest of the mesh and focus only on the ear. You might notice that there are some weird dips on the mesh. Don't worry too much about them. We will do another voxel remesh soon to incorporate the eyelids, so they will be gone. Before doing so, I'll prepare the area around the eyelids. Again, change matcaps to help you judge what can improve. Now we are ready to voxel remesh again, this time with higher resolution to keep the detail we have been working on. This time I'll turn on dynamic topology. This automatically adds or removes detail to the mesh, depending on what I'm doing. Smoothing zoomed out will simplify the polygons, whereas detailing zoomed in will give us more polygons. I'll work on the area around the eyes and then move on to the rest of the features, working with even more detail as before. Depending on the complexity of your design, you will spend more or less time detailing. I feel happy with what I have achieved, so let's move on to step 6. The eyebrows and hair. For the eyebrows, I am painting a mask. Since I need some detail, I'll add polygons with dynamic topology and then paint it. I am making the mask bigger than the shapes I have defined. You'll see why in a moment. On the mask setting menu, I will extract this as a separate geometry. I'll experiment with the right thickness of the shell and once I am happy, I'll refine it with the project and the trim tool to get a nice silhouette. This technique works with other type of facial hair like beards or mustaches. For the rest of the hair, I'll use new primitives to block them out. We'll keep it very stylized and simple. This is not different from what we have done before. Use a sphere with multi-resolution levels, work from general to detail. Take advantage of your primitives depending on what you are doing, like a cylinder with a hole in the middle for the accessory that ties the hair together. For the areas of hair closer to the scalp, I'll do the same as I did for the eyebrows. Mask an area and extract it. Before modifying much the geometry, I will mask the bottom attached to the scalp to protect it from changing it accidentally. These extracted shales can have a weird topology, hard to work with, so I will enable dynamic topology. I'll eventually merge with voxel these geometries, so they're only one, but before doing so, I have to make them work together as separate geometries. My model is ready to be painted now. 
I won't describe this process because that deserves a video of its own. The last thing I want to show you is a way to block in the eyelashes. For them I am using a sphere which I squashed, almost making it flat. Again, my main allies are the tools Move, Flatten and Crease. Different levels of resolution will come in handy as well. For the bottom lashes I'll just make a duplicate and reshape it. I wasn't very fast with the result, so I got rid of them. Nevertheless, the point of this process is to get an idea of how the result would look like. I will actually remake the eyelashes during the retopology process, which will be the topic for our next video. So here you go, the final result. See you soon! That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.